The much anticipated sequel to one of the most surprising successes of 2013, Pacific Rim, dropped this weekend. The Monsters vs. Robots action movie finally dethroned Black Panther, which held the top grossing spot at the box office for four straight weeks. But is this sequel about as enjoyable as eating leftovers from a good meal you had five years ago? Or is this movie actually better than the movie that was made five years ago? And where do these movies make all their money? Let's do it. I'm Ben Davies. This is Pure Hollywood. Universal Studios bought the rights of Pacific Rim from Warner Brothers to make their sequel, Pacific Rim Uprising, for about $150 million. It grossed $150 million opening weekend worldwide, but only 18%, only about $28 million of that profit, was made in the United States or domestically. So the question is, is this normal for movies to make most of their money outside the United States? Actually, yes, very much so. In fact, Avatar, the highest grossing movie of all time, only took in about 27% of its profits domestically. Titanic was about 30%, Harry Potter The Deathly Hallows was only about 28%, and The Fast and the Furious 7 was 23% of its total profits from domestic. In fact, the only movie in the top 20 grossing of all time to take in 50% of its profit from the United States is Black Panther, which is odd because America is supposed to be such a racist country, right? Because it's, it's majority white and that's what the media says constantly and... Yeah, you get it. But the real question is, is Pacific Rim Uprising better than the original? Not by a long shot, but let's get into it. My view review is a three out of five. Now as a movie goer just trying to enjoy yourself, we all love beautiful special effects, quirky dialogues and fun situations, but this movie really doesn't land enough to get the ball rolling more than that. And, and you're really about an hour and a half in of seeing these characters and everything going on and start feeling more of a meh feeling than an exciting feeling. And for one reason is because the original source material takes itself a bit more seriously and earns its PG-13 rating. This movie feels more like Power Rangers or Ninja Turtles, but still somehow tries to keep its PG-13 rating and doesn't really feel like it makes any sense. Now, it feels like I'm coming down hard on this movie for no reason, but it's because it's a sequel, and the original movie had some things that were truly great. In fact, the first 10 minutes of the original Pacific Rim is better and more engaging than this entire movie, and if you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But why is that? Let's get into it. My critic review is a 2 out of 5. Now, to really break down this film, you have to go back to the original, and it really is just an insane fantasy, but what captivated audience is that they managed to ground this fantasy in some real-world practical implications. For example, nothing just happens to happen. They didn't just build these giant robots to build them. They had the monsters come through, they couldn't nuke them and destroy the planets, so they built these things to fight them. The reason you have unlikely heroes and these pilots is that you can't just throw military people into these machines. You need two people to co-pilot, deal with each other, and have a special connection to share the neural load together, right and left hemispheres. They made it much more interesting with the different characters. Also, it made the battles more interesting because it wasn't just a monster fighting an inanimate object. No, you had two people struggling together inside this machine to save the world. And it really is an impressively executed film, even though, no, it's not going to be critically acclaimed forever and all this kind of stuff. It's not, I'm not saying it's a great film, but it is a really, really fun movie, and it deserves praise, especially for Gamilo del Toro, the writer and director. Everything in it was so well-crafted. All the machines that mimic their pilots, the Russians versus the, the Australians in Eureka Striker and Gypsy Danger, all the robots were built to match the people. Their fighting style was really fun to watch, and all the monsters were completely different. Now, in this movie, the world is ending, and instead of these well-trained, unlikely heroes, you have a handful of random children that are thrown into these machines. And instead of the machines mimicking the fighting style and personality of the pilots, the kids just jump in any machine they want and all of a sudden become these crazy fighting machines in, in the movie. Particularly a 14-year-old girl who all of a sudden is saved from a scrap heap and is there to save the world and fight the final battle. Like, what? They just completely broke kind of the rules and the foundation that made this fantasy that is unbelievable, more believable and enjoyable to watch, when they do stuff like that. My Faith and Values is a 3 out of 5. Now, I was happy to see there was nothing overtly politically correct in the movie. In fact, if that had happened, I would have really, really been upset. And there are also some good values they promote, including fighting for something bigger than yourself, being a part of a group, being part of a better idea. And there's also a strong theme of forgiveness and taking responsibility. One thing that I did actually like in the movie, there's a theme of manning up, being the man you're supposed to be, which is something that's forgotten in almost every Hollywood movie now. But John Boyega's character who's the lead, in spite of him going through the whole don't be the person your parents expect you to be thing, ends up realizing that because of his own failures and faults and lashing out, he's the one that made all these mistakes and now he must go back 
and right the wrong and be the man he was supposed to be to help use his talents to save the world. So it was a cool message that was interwoven throughout it. Overall, basically, Pacific Rim Uprising is a DVD rainy day kind of movie. However, if you have not seen the original, I highly suggest you go check that one out. It is way more fun and it's a better movie just as a whole. I'm Ben Davies, this is Pure Hollywood. And another fantastic news, you can now download the Rebel app and take me with you wherever you go to get exclusive content in the entire Rebel lineup.